بسم الله والحمد لله صلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending the salutations upon the messenger alayhi salatu was salam and upon his family and his companions and upon all those who follow upon his guidance into the establishment of the last day to proceed ikhwan فَنُقَدِّمُ لَكُمْ الْآنِ إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى كَلَامًا مُبَارَكًا عَظِيمًا مِنَ الشَّيْخِ وَحِيدِ عَبْدِ السَّلَامِ بَعْلِ حَفِظَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عندما يتكلم عن فضل العلم فضل العلم So now we're going to put forth to ourselves the noble and blessed speech of the Shaykh Wahid Abdul Salam Bali حفظه الله تعالى whereas he is discussing the virtues of seeking knowledge the virtues of seeking knowledge وقبل أن نواصل يا إخوان أحب أن أذكر نفسي وإخوة أن هذا الشيخ هو يعتبر من تلاميذ العلامة محمد بن صالح العثيمي ومن تلاميذ الشيخ المحدث عبد العزيز بن باس وغيرهما رحمهم الله تعالى رحمهم الله تعالى So before we present the speech of the Shaykh we would love to mention that this Shaykh here he's from the students of the great Imam Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen rahimahullah and he's also from the students of the late great Imam Abdul Aziz ibn Ibaz rahimahullah ta'ala so we just wanted to mother mention that so that the people know who they're taking their benefit from walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen aida ya ikhwan hadha aw hadhi tarjamatu mubasharatun fa inshallah ta'ala ما أكتب شيئا وأنا سأحاول أن أترجمه مباشرة فاصبروا معي في أمر الرحمن الرحيم. Also, I'd like to mention that this translation here, I'm not going to write anything down as I'm a little tired right now. So we're going to try to do this translation uh, live. So just be patient with your brother. إن شاء الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن الرحيم طيب. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. So the Sheikh he began firstly by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى and sending the salutations upon the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام. أما بعد أيها المشاهدون الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. He says so to proceed O you noble and blessed viewers and those who are watching this clip and those who are listening to this he wants to give the greetings or he gave the greetings of Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh He welcomes those who are watching and those who are listening to this revised and mutajadid uh, that which has been uh, done again, this revised clip or revised program. He wants to give the welcome to you and to those who are watching and those who are listening. So he says today's circle of knowledge, today's discussion is a very beneficial and very important discussion. It's important to all of the general Muslims generally, the common folk and likewise is important to the students of knowledge especially the students of knowledge especially and the title of this reminder or this advice is is how do you seek knowledge? What's the way that you should go about seeking beneficial knowledge. He says, so why did we chose this? Why do you or how you seek knowledge? Why is this? 
because he says because seeking knowledge is going to take you and arrive you on the path of Allah the path of Allah so he says knowledge is the thing that while you're on the path is going to eliminate is going to brighten your path as it takes you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he says firstly I want to mention that we're going to discuss a few points in this this sitting we're going to discuss a few points in this in this sitting as for the first point uh, the virtues of seeking knowledge and as for the second point what's the person's intention that they should have when they seek knowledge the third point what are the best times for the person to try to memorize what are the best times to memorize as for the fourth point how do you make this knowledge firm how do you make the tathbeet of seeking knowledge how do you make it firm and he says the next point we're going to go over from those points is the connection of food and drink how does food and drink play a role when seeking knowledge and as for the sixth point he's going to discuss is how to make the tadarruj how does the student of knowledge he make his progress the sister she makes her development tadarrujan she goes from one level to the next level to the next level how is this and then he goes on to mention a piece of poetry that as any of the brothers who follow our lessons any of the sisters I'm not the best translator of poetry so usually I leave that in the original Arabic language but he may not he went on to mention two lines of poetry that once again is difficult upon me to translate so I won't translate that so he says firstly the virtues of seeking knowledge he says firstly first and foremost it's upon you to understand to realize that seeking knowledge is going to increase your khashiyah your awe or your fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so who wants anyone who wants to arrive themselves at the level of having fear and awe of Allah is upon this individual to seek knowledge as Allah Ta'ala says in the noble book in the Quran, Inna yakshallaha min ibadihi al ulama. They are verily those who truly fear Allah from the servants of Allah are the scholars of Al Islam. Surah Fatir. So the Shaykh he comments on this verse. He says, Here the verse means that the individuals that have the most fear and the most khashiyah the most awe of Allah are the scholars of Al-Islam and knowledge if you seek knowledge is going to rise you is going to elevate your status in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in degrees as Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, the Shaykh is referring to Surah Al Mujadala. As Allah Ta'ala says, Verily Allah Ta'ala, He is going to elevate in ranks and degrees 
those from among you who believe and those from among you who have been given knowledge. So every time you increase yourself in knowledge, you're also raising yourself. Yeah. Like salam. Say it again. Okay, as soon as I get done here, I'm going to try to hit out. Alright. So he says, Hafidhahullah Ta'ala, so every time you increase yourself in knowledge, you also are elevating your, your status, your level, your rank, in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He says, however, what's the intent that the person should have, the brother, the sister should have while seeking knowledge? What do they intend? He says, first and foremost, I warn you, be careful, oh my brothers, and be careful, oh my sisters, that you are seeking knowledge trying to obtain fame, trying to become famous from the people. I warn you from this. Be careful of this. For indeed this is a corrupt intention. This is a corrupt intention. And beware, beware my brothers and my sisters of while you're seeking knowledge, trying to intend Upon seeking knowledge, that you become a famous writer. This is what you want. This is what you intend. That you become a famous author. This is also a corrupt intention. And beware, oh my brothers, that you have the intention while seeking knowledge to become a world-famous scholar, a world-famous imam, a world-famous lecturer. All of this is a corrupt intention. All of these intentions are corrupt intentions. So therefore, the question arises, what do you intend when you're seeking knowledge? And then he gives some advice for those who are seeking knowledge and those who teach and they give classes and they write and the likes. He said, if you want to write these things down and keep them with you, so before you give your talks, before you give your lectures, before you give your classes, you can remind yourself. You can remind yourself that you have the ikhlas, the sincerity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is your intent? What should be your intention? Rather, what is your intentions? Then he says it in the plural form. He says, what is your intentions that you should have while seeking knowledge? He says, yeah, Ikhwan, as for the first intention, as for the first intention, he says, your intention should be that you are seeking this knowledge sincerely for Allah so that you can worship Allah upon clarity, upon insight, and upon knowledge. As Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, Subhan Allah wa ma ana min al As Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, say to them, O Muhammad, verily, Kul hadi sabil adu ila Allah ala basira, say to them, O Muhammad, that this is my path, and I call to Allah ala basira upon insight. Upon clarity, upon knowledge, Anna, Wamanatabani, me and those who follow me, 
wa subhanallahi ma ana min al mushrikin and glory belongs to Allah that I am not from among the polytheists. Thaniya, تطلب العلم لكي تصل إلى مرضات الله تبارك وتعالى. As for the second intention, as for the second intention of seeking knowledge, you intend by seeking knowledge that you arrive at the pleasure, the ridat Allah, the pleasure of Allah. سبحانه وتعالى ثالثا تطلب العلم لكي تبلغه إلى الناس نب... for the third intention the third that you intend that with the knowledge you convey that you convey the knowledge to the people بر الله امرأ سمع مقالتي فوعاها ثم أداها كما سمعها فرب مبلغ أوعى من سامع as the Messenger of Allah mentions, and he's referring to the hadith that comes in the Sunan, narrated by Abdullah bin Mas'ud and other than him, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that he says, the Prophet of Allah says, May Allah brighten, illuminate the face of an individual who hears my speech, meaning the speech of the Prophet, hears my speech, understands my speech, and conveys my speech, and conveys, and we just lost, lost our lighting, <laughs> and conveys my speech to others, for indeed how many of the people, how many of the people uh, who have been conveyed the information understood it better than the one who actually heard it. Better than the one who actually heard it. Rabi'an. تطلب العلم لتعلمه للناس. Fourth intention that you intend with seeking knowledge, that with this knowledge you have the ability to teach the people, to convey the message to the people. لما ثبت عند الطبراني بسند حسن أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال معلم الخير يستغفر له كل شيء. And then he goes on to mention a tremendous narration that's collected by Imam Al-Tabarani with the Hassan chain of narration. That the Messenger والسلام, says that everything makes dua for the people who teaches the people good. Hatta al hitan even the well in the ocean Allahu Akbar even the well in the ocean they ask Allah Ta'ala to forgive the individual who teaches the people goodness and then he goes on to mention the word Haytan is the well is the fish that's in the ocean even the whale in the ocean supplicates to Allah and asks Allah to forgive the person who teaches the people good, who teaches the people the ta'a, who encourages the people upon goodness. He says, not only the fish, ya ikhwan, not only the fish, Ask Allah for the forgiveness of the person who teaches the people good. Not even the, not only the fish, but the namla, even the ants, even the ants. Allahu Akbar. Even the ants supplicate to Allah and ask Allah for the forgiveness of the person who teaches the people good. <laughs> As the Messenger of Allah said in another variant of this hadith, even the ants that are in their crevice, that are in their holes, they also ask Allah Ta'ala to forgive the individual. And we just lost our recording. We're having some, some technical difficulties.
So we just lost the shape. تطلب العلم لك رابعا لا يصلون على معلم الناس الخير يصلون يعني يستغفرون so it says that they they ask Allah That they ask Allah to forgive the individuals who teach the people good. ليس ذلك وحده بل إن الملائكة لا تستغفر لك كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن. So he said, not only this, not only the 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 whales in the ocean, not only the ants in their holes. He said, but even the angels of Allah. As the Messenger of Allah says, He said, as it comes in another hadith, that the Messenger of Allah mentions, that verily the angels of Allah, they ask for the forgiveness of the Mu'allimin and nas al khaira of those who teach the people good. He said, but not only the angels, not only the ants, not only the uh, the whales, not only the ants, not only the angels, but he said, even Allah. He said, even Allah, he praises the individual. And Allah mentions you in goodness. Because you are teaching the people goodness. As the Messenger of Allah mentions in a hadith that has been declared Hassan by the noble Imam Al Albani, He says, as it comes in another hadith, that in Allah. وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ وَحَتَّ الْحِيْتَانَ وَالنَّمْلَةِ That verily Allah and His angels and the whales and the ocean and even the ants لَيُسَلُّونَ عَلَى مُعَلِّمِ النَّاسِ الْخَيْرَةِ That they ask for the forgiveness of the one who teaches the people goodness. وَصَلَاةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْعَبْدِ ثَنَاؤُهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي الْمَلَاءِ الْآنِ and when it says the salat, uh, the salatullahi al abd, what does it mean when al the that you're sending the prayers of Allah upon the servant? It says that he means here that Allah is mentioning him, fi thana and a'la. That Allah is mentioning this person and the most elevated of stations. So you're seeking knowledge in order to obtain. All of these benefits that he just mentioned. Aniyatul Khamisa, am tatlub al ilm li an zahabak ila dars al ilm jihad. He said, as for the fifth intention, you're intending to seek knowledge because when you go out to the lessons, when you leave and you go out to the lessons, this is considered to be jihad, fighting in the cause of Allah. سبحانه وتعالى سبحانه وتعالى قال معاذ بن جبل رضي الله عنه طلب العلم جهاد as معاذ بن جبل translate as no, the noble companion of the messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام he used to say طلب العلم جهاد that seeking knowledge is a battle is a jihad is a you're fighting in the cause of Allah because you're seeking knowledge تطلب العلم لأن جلسة العلم 
تحسب جلسة عبادة وتسبيح وذكر. Because while you're seeking knowledge and you're in the circles of the lessons and the circles of the class, that this is considered to be worship. And this also, while you're sitting in the lessons, ya ikhwan, this is considered to be worship and a remembrance of Allah and the, the tasbih, the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhu wa mudhakaratu al-ilm tasbih. As Mu'ad used to say, radiyallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, that the mudhakaratu al-ilm, that when you sit in the circle and you go over the lessons and you go over your, your knowledge of Allah and His Messenger, of Al Islam, that this is considered to be tasbih. This is glorification of Allah. You're actually glorifying Allah by reviewing your knowledge. <laughs> لأنك أثناء ذهابك إلى جلسة العلم أو درس العلم فإن الملائكة لطبع أجنحتها لك. He said also, while you're leaving to go out to the lessons, to go out to your classes, to go out to the circles of knowledge, the angels of Allah, they engulf their wings upon you. لفرحها بك. Out of pleasure with you, out of being pleased with that which you're doing. As the Messenger of Allah mentions in the hadith that's collected by Imam al Tirmidhi, Rahimahullah, that the angels they engulf their wings upon the students of knowledge. Allahu Akbar. So now the Shaykh, he asks a question. He says, what does it mean when the Messenger of Allah said that the angels engulf their wings? What does this mean? He says, some scholars, they say, that the angels, when they're soaring about, they have their wings out. And when the students of knowledge are going to their lessons, the angels enclose their wings upon them. <laughs> and a state of humility and humbleness from the angels upon the students of knowledge. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> and two they pass by. And two they pass by. وقال بعض العلماء لا تضع أجنحتها أي لا تفرش أجنحتها وتبسط أجنحتها وكأنها تقول طالب العلم نحملك نحن إلى المكان الذي تطلب فيه العلم. And he says, and some scholars they say that it means that the angels they expand and they extend their their wings out as if they're saying to the student of knowledge, come, come, we'll take you, we'll carry you to where you're going. الله أكبر. رضا بما يصنع أي فرحا بطلبه للعلم. And they do this, he says. This means فرحا that they are pleased and elated and happy with what the student of knowledge is doing, meaning seeking knowledge. ثامنا تطلب العلم لأن جلسة العلم تحفها الملائكة. He says number eight that you're seeking knowledge also because the circles of knowledge the angels encompass them. The circles of knowledge are encompassed by the angels of Allah, are surrounded by the angels of Allah. And mercy comes from among from them upon the students. And calmness and sakina and ease and comfort. And then Allah mentions those who seek knowledge. In the company of Allah, meaning with the company of the angels, is another benefit. That Al Imam Muslim he mentions in his Sahih that the Prophet of Allah, Alihi Salatu Salam, he said, Majtama Kaumun fi baitin min buyutillah, 
يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه بينهم إلا حفتهم الملائكة وغشيتهم الرحمة ونزلت عليهم السكينة وذكرهم الله في من عنده. He says in a long hadith that the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira is collected by Imam Muslim رحمه الله. He said مجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله that a group of people do not come together and review and read the book of Allah amongst themselves except that the angels of Allah encompass them and they, the, the mercy from the angels encompass them and the angels engulf them and the sakina, the calmness and the tranquility are upon them and يذكرهم الله في من عنده and Allah mentions them and the company of those who are with Allah, meaning and the company of the Malaika, the angels of Allah, Subhanahu wa Taala. So he said, all of this is for you. All of these affairs of guidance and goodness, O oh you seeker of knowledge. So he said, ponder with me and reflect with me the statement of the Messenger of Allah. صلى الله عليه وسلم. إلا حفتهم الملائكة. That the, the messenger of Allah said, except that the angels they engulf, they encompass upon them. جلسة العلم تحفها الملائكة. He said, imagine, imagine the circles of knowledge being surrounded with the angels or by the angels of Allah, سبحانه وتعالى. تحفها لماذا؟ قال العلماء. تحفها الملائكة لأن عظماء الدنيا لا يمشون إلا بحرس. He says, mashallah. He says, why is this? He says, some scholars they mention, they explain, and they say the angels are surrounding the circles of knowledge because some scholars say that the noble and honorable people of the dunya, when they walk about, they walk and they have guards protecting them. They have guards shielding them off, guards protecting them. And the students of knowledge are the noble people of the hereafter. So the Allah Ta'ala protects them, shields them, guards them by the angels. Allah Akbar. تحفهم الملائكة أي تحرسهم من الشياطين. And some scholars explain this hadith, and they say that the angels are surrounding the circles means that the angels protect the students of knowledge, protect them from the shayateen, from the jinn and the devils. فلا تقترب منهم الشياطين. So therefore, the shayateen, the devils, and the shaitan. Cannot come close to them. Allahu Akbar. They are protected and guarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Shaykh, he says, May Allah make us and you from among them. And we say the same. Nas'al Allah ta'ala and naja'al madha and taja'alana wa iyyakum minhum. And we ask that Allah makes us and our brothers and our sisters from among the students of knowledge who are protected and shielded and guarded by Allah by way of the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a uh, mercy, ghashiyatuhum rahma and as the Prophet said, a mercy covers them. He says, meaning that the mercy of Allah descends upon them. And he said, the mercy of Allah, no one, or they will never be harmed. And the tranquility and ease and calmness also descends upon them. So he says here, O oh my beloved, what does it mean, Sakina? 
The word that we translate to mean calmness and ease. What's the meaning in the Arabic language? Sakina. He says it's a tranquility that comes from the heart. That comes from the heart. And this tranquility of the heart, it increases the heart in iman and belief. It increases the heart in iman and it also increases the heart upon acceptance. And oh Allah, we ask that you do not deprive us from this sakina. And he says, more honorable than all of these benefits is that Allah, the end of the hadith, that Allah will mention the students of knowledge, will mention the individuals who come together in the house of Allah, like the hadith, come together and they go over the, the hadith in the house of Allah, in the masjid, that Allah will mention them in the company of Allah, meaning the angels. يذكر هؤلاء الذين يطلبون العلم ويتعرفون على الشرع ويطلبون ما يقربهم إلى الله يذكرهم في الملأ الأعلى. He says meaning those Allah will mention those who are going over the knowledge, those who are learning the book of Allah and the Sunnah, those who are learning uh, what Allah has made obligatory upon them, that Allah will mention them in the highest. Of stations. عند الملائكة يا ملائكتي إن لي عبادا في مكان كذا. That Allah will mention them among the angels. It's as if Allah will say to them, O oh my angels, verily I have some servants and they're in this land of such and such and such and such. يطلبون العلم الآن. And they are right now increasing themselves in knowledge. And they are mentioning me. ما أجمل طلب العلم. So the Sheikh says, how beautiful, how wonderful, how amazing is seeking knowledge. He says, what reward can be greater? What can be the great or what can be greater than seeking knowledge? And he says, as for the tenth intent of seeking knowledge. لأن العلم هو الذي يقربك من الله عز وجل ويبين لك طريق الخير فتتبعه وطريق الشر فتجتنبه. He says you're seeking knowledge because seeking knowledge is the thing that's going to bring you close to Allah. And seeking knowledge is the, the vehicle, the vessel that's going to give you the ability to differentiate between that which is good and then you're going to accept it and follow it and call to it. And it's going to give you the ability to differentiate between that which is evil and harmful. But And then you're going to thus stay away from it. For indeed, you are never going to be able to differentiate between the halal, that which is lawful, and the haram, that which is unlawful, except that you have knowledge, except that you have knowledge. And you will never be able to differentiate between ta'a, obedience, wal and disobedience, except with knowledge. And you will never be able to differentiate between that which يقربك إلى الله that which will bring you close to Allah وما يبعدك من الله and that which will bring you far away from Allah except with knowledge except with knowledge ولذلك كان العالم أحب إلى الله من العابد الجاهل He says so for this reason you find that the scholar, the one who knows, is more beloved and closer to Allah than the mere servant of Allah, than just the servant 
of Allah. وأذكر بهذه المناسبة هذا الموقف يذكر في الإسرائيليات. And now the Sheikh is going to mention uh, a story or a situation that happened to the people of Bani Israel, and we'll say that inshallah ta'ala as I have to take my little brother to work and we'll continue inshallah ta'ala perhaps after Asr or perhaps after Salati al Maghrib. So once again, we were listening to the advice of the noble Sheikh Wahid Abdus Salam Bali Hafidahallah. And he's from the students of the noble Sheikh al Uthaymeen and the noble Sheikh Ibn Abbas, Rahimahum Allah Ta'ala. So we'll continue, inshallah Ta'ala, with this advice showing the virtues of the students of knowledge. For all of those who gave their salams, we say to you, Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we'll continue later. And may Allah Ta'ala honor each and every one of you. When I sub to Fameen Allah, if there's anything that I said that's correct, then it's from Allah. When I talk to from NFC, and if there's anything that I said that's incorrect, then it's from myself. Wa jazakum Allahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.